What is up, guys? It is time for me to discuss my most highly anticipated fights in the UFC for 2024. Keyword, my most highly anticipated fights. This is not, you know, me taking a poll of all MMA fans. This is just my opinion on which fights I'm most hyped for, which fights I'm not interested in at all, and everything in between. Okay, so I'm going to be using a tier list to rank all of these. And without further ado, let's just get right into it, man. Let's get right into this. The first one that I'm going to throw on this list, I'm thinking about S tier. Let's start with the S tier. I'm going to put my... Uh, I'm going to put my favorite fighter, Alexander Volkanovsky, in the S tier. All right, right off the bat, my favorite fighter. Which means I'm going to have a mini heart attack as soon as the bell rings. The first bell. Volkanovsky bouncing off of a KO loss. This is a really dangerous matchup. So there's a lot of risk, but I still think he's the better guy. That's what makes this so interesting, in my opinion. Because I think Tapuri is going to beat him. So, first of all, that kind of softens the blow. If he loses, I'm talking about if Volk loses, I kind of expect it a little bit. I'll also get my pick right. That's a bit of a bonus. But there's a chance that Volk goes out there and wins, proves me wrong, and puts the Aldo fans in their place for good. Okay, we'll never have to hear about Jose Aldo being the GOAT again if Volkanovski beats Taporia. I already think Volk is the featherweight GOAT, but you get my point. If Volk wins this, no one can ever talk about his career at featherweight again i'll do a 24-hour volk stream i'll celebrate for a week and just stylistically that this fight's going to be a treat to watch either way no matter what happens both guys are well-rounded tapori is like the first stocky guy that volk is fighting as a champion the only other guy that he fought that had like the build of Taporia was chad mendez and that was a long time ago and we saw that that actually was a little bit of a tough matchup for volk uh, totally different Volkanovski that we're seeing nowadays, but I really do think that Taporia is like the most well-rounded guy in that division, aside from the champ himself. So I just can't wait to see this fight. I also just can't wait for the buildup because we know Volkanovski has a big chip on his shoulder going into this matchup. And Taporia, the cocky bastard that he is, is going to be doing his best to get under Volkanovski's skin. And that's just going to make for a really fun press conference. That is going to make for, you know, a little bit of showmanship during the fight itself. Maybe Volkanovski is going to start yelling at Taporia. Maybe Taporia is going to start giving Volkanovski a taste of his own medicine, yelling at Volk instead if he starts to get the better of him. I just can't wait for this matchup, man. The next one that I'm going to throw in the A tier, that's going to be Sean O'Malley and Marlon Vera. Chito. The reason I love this fight so much is because there's a little bit of an ego battle going on between both of these guys. They have a bit of a beef going on. O'Malley has the UFC backing him. O'Malley's got the clout. He's got the money, the fame. Cheeto wants that. Doesn't care that much about the clout and the fame, but Cheeto wants the money. He wants the belt. Whereas O'Malley, I'm sure he looks at Cheeto and all the respect that he gets and all the love that the fans have for him. And, you know, he's just a down-to-earth guy that doesn't have to try. He doesn't have to paint his hair. The fighters respect him. Because they look at O'Malley and they're like, this guy, he got a freebie, he got a handout. They gave him a gift against Jan. Just look at the way Aljo talks about O'Malley. Okay? He's still salty about that. He still feels like O'Malley was given the easy path, right? There's just a different level of respect that the fighters have for Cheeto. The fans like him. Whereas you look at the narrative shift on O'Malley, um, in the eyes of the fans and the media, every single O'Malley post that I see these days you look at the comments and it's just people talking about how he's not a big star. He's a fraudulent star. He's been planted in. He's not living up to the expectations. Some people were mentioning that about six months ago, but it wasn't, you know, this in your face. Um, and I feel like that's going to give O'Malley a bit of a chip on his shoulder, right? And the other thing that I love about this fight, because there's already that beef. Both of these guys really don't like each other. They're just polar opposites. Um, the other thing that I like is it feels like O'Malley is being sentenced to 25 minutes in a cage with a guy that he can't finish, who's just super tough and gritty, who may not be more skilled, but there's something really scary about fighting a guy that you're most likely not going to be able to put away, and you're in there for 25 minutes, and you're already a brittle guy. Like O'Malley, he gets injured in all of his fights, breaking his hand, he needs to take these long layoffs, 
And we're going to have to see him dodge Cheeto Vera for 25. That's just awesome. And O'Malley, if he wins, it's going to be a fun fight because I love watching O'Malley strike. I mean, this guy is a high output striker. He's super slick on the feet. If Cheeto wins, it's going to create chaos in the UFC. It'll be a big upset. I'll be over the moon because we get a new bantamweight champion that I prefer. Um, I'm a big fan of Cheeto Vera too, so I want to see him win anyway. But the fight itself is going to be fun. Even if it's not as great as a lot of people expect, even if it's a little bit slow, it's not going to be like a Leon Edwards two kicks around type of fight. And it's not going to be like a Adesanya two kicks around and a couple of pitter-pat jabs and feints. It's going to be better than that, okay? Cheeto's a guy that's willing to die in there too. And I think that at the end of this fight, he will start pushing forward and gunning for it. And if O'Malley finishes Cheeto, that's going to shock me, okay? Because right now I look at him as someone that can't be finished. So this fight, I love it. Next up, we have Brandon Moreno versus Brandon Roy Val 2. Another flyweight rematch. Listen, I'm just kind of over these. Now, of course, it'll be fun. It'll be entertaining like the first fight was. We'll get something a little bit more definitive because I believe that Roy Val got injured in the last fight on the ground. Of course, I'm going to get excited like during the night of the fight. Like I'm going to look forward to watching this on the night. But I'd be lying if I said that I'm pacing back and forth thinking about a Brandon Moreno matchup. Like even though he's a really fun fighter and he brings it every time, the flyweight division is just never going to be as special as some of these others. And it just won't ever compete for whatever reason. I just don't get as hyped for flyweight fights, especially when they're rematches, okay? Like these guys are never fighting new people. And that's the good thing about Manel Cap. But hey, look at how he screwed himself over by missing weight and taking himself out of the title picture. And now he's fading back into irrelevancy again, right? He really missed a big opportunity. He's still relevant, but he's not as popping as he would have been if he had, you know, put his name back into the equation last week. It's another rematch, okay? It's a better fight than the Amir al Bazi one stylistically it's fun but i can only get so hyped for it let's get on to the next one bones and miocic that's right i'm putting this in the b tier now you guys may be saying what do you mean lucas i thought you were annoyed by stipe miocic and john jones and i was but i could just see myself getting really hyped for this during fight week when i see these guys stare down and i Listen to the interviews where John Jones is starting to play his mind games. And then I tune into Stipe's interview and he's saying, I don't care, man, I just want my belt, right? And Stipe's just rambling on about wanting his belt, dismissing John Jones' trash talk. And Jones is trolling Stipe saying, this guy's ha- guy training boxing, man. You better get your wrestling shoes on, buddy. I just like the way that Jones goes about doing mental warfare. And the injury that John Jones has or the one that he'll be recovering from actually makes this better because now it's more competitive. I mean, 90% of us are going to say John Jones wins. He just beat Cyril Gaon, dominated him. This is an old man, Grandpa Stipe Miocic, that's coming off of a flatline KO loss, not that hungry anymore. You have to beg him to get into the octagon. Of course, Jones is going to win. But now, Jones just tore his pec and he had surgery on his elbow. So we're not going to see the best version of John Jones, the best heavyweight version of Jones. This is a deteriorated version. It's a little bit more interesting. And I think we may get ourselves a competitive fight. And ultimately, it's still John Jones. It's still Stipe Miocic. These guys are legends. Although there are other fights that I'd rather see Jones in, like the Aspinall fight, it is what it is. I've accepted that none of those are going to happen. This is the only fight John Jones is going to entertain. It's the only fight Stipe is going to entertain. And when these guys are staring down in the middle of the octagon, you will feel goosebumps. So I'm looking forward to it. Let's get on to the next one. Oliveira and Armand Suryuki. And I'm going to put this in the A tier. You don't need trash talk for this one. Just a perfect stylistic matchup, okay? Can Armand Suryuki level up tenfold with the striking and all of a sudden have power in his hands? Will he be able to knock out Charles Oliveira? And if he does, he'll look like a serious tough test for Islam Makashev. Uh, And that'll be a rematch that can be marketable for this guy to knock Charles out, who hasn't been finished outside of a title fight in forever. But I'm also expecting Charles to get the dub. So imagine Charles finishes Armand Suryuki and everyone loves Oliveira. The crowd is going to erupt at UFC 300. And 
we're going to have a lot of interest in that rematch with Islam Makhachev, okay? And Charles brings the drama on fight week two. We're going to see this guy with tears in his eyes playing Brazilian gospel music. Armand's going to be trying to play some of these mental games, but it's not going to work because Charles is just beyond all of that shit at this point. And I can't wait for the grappling exchanges too. Two really fun styles. I'm looking forward to this one. It's a perfect matchup for UFC 300. Uh, Let's get on to the next one. This is one that I have no interest in. And that's Justin Gagey versus Max Holloway. All right. We've been talking about this for the past 24 hours, but I hate this fight. I don't want to see Max Holloway half-ass moving up to 155 to ultimately get his ass beat, take a life-changing amount of damage, and ruin his chances of ever becoming a champion at 145 again. If Holloway fights Gagey, I want to see him actually taking adequate time to bulk up. You cannot put on a lot of muscle in a three-month period of time, especially when those three months is you like going through a serious training camp where you're going to be doing a ton of cardio and conditioning work, all right, and just fight-specific work. You're not going to be able to put on muscle. You put on muscle in the offseason, string bean Holloway, Justin Gagey, people are saying that Max is going to get knocked out for the first time. You you know he's biting off more than he can chew. You know he's probably going to lose. And I just don't like Max Holloway doing these like side quests when he can still win a belt at 145. You may disagree. I just don't like this matchup. Um, let me just say this about Justin Gagey. Super entertaining. I love watching him fight. But I honestly, personally don't give a fuck if Gagey wins. I want Holloway to like be competitive in these high-level matchups. I just want Gagey to slug. I just want Gagey to go out there and, and put on an absolute scrap every time. For Holloway, sure, he's entertaining, and that's a big part of why we love seeing him fight. That's why he's fighting for the BMF belt to begin with. But I, I put him in a different class right now. Even though Gagey's also elite, and I understand that, Gagey's like a top three fighter in the lightweight division. I mean, he's special. Because Max Holloway can still maybe get that belt if Teporia beats Volkanovski. I just think of him as a, as a different kind of guy in a different part of his career, right? I know Gagey talks about how he still wants the undisputed title and he's going to retire if he loses his next fight. But I already view Gagey as a guy that's not going to win a belt anymore. Whereas Holloway, there's still a chance. Uh, and that's why I don't want to see this fight where Holloway's going to take a life-changing amount of damage. Um Unless he actually like gives himself the best chance to be competitive, which he's not. So that's my issue with this one. I mean, Holloway's going to get his legs torn to shreds. Volkanovski kicked him to shreds in their first fight. Gagey's got terrifying leg, leg kicks. And, you know, man, Gagey's just so hard to hit these days. Good luck trying to pin that guy down. And Holloway, he's not the same guy that will come forward, point down to the ground, and slug it out like he did against Dustin Poirier. He's more reserved in his approach, and I just don't think he's got the power with a more reserved style to be able to really do damage to Gagey without moving forward, fighting downhill, letting go those 10-piece combinations. Um, And I also don't think those 10-piece combinations would land because Gagey's just going to be slipping a lot of shots and countering him hard. Stylistically, it's just a terrible matchup. If you don't care about Holloway that much and you just want to see a beatdown, totally understand it. Okay, just don't want to see this fight. Uh, next up, we have Yan Zhao Nan and Zhang Wei Li. This is tough, man. This is really tough. I hate that this is on UFC 300. I actually hate it. And I think that Zhang Wei Li is going to take down Yan Zhao Nan and just wrestle her for five rounds and 50 45 her. I don't think we're going to get a war. Zhang Wei Li has been showing us lately that she's just going to be a well rounded fighter that's going to take the path of least resistance every time. And Yan Zhao Nan has been outgrappled in the past. If this was in China as a fight night main event, I'd love it. All right. If this was on its own pay-per-view and maybe it was like a weaker main event, I'd be more interested in it. But just stylistically, I think it's going to be a little bit boring. And it's on UFC 300, which just makes it 10 times worse. Uh, I wouldn't mind putting it in, in the C tier, but I'm not excited. Like... I'm not going to bullshit and act like I'm hyped for this. If it was Zhang Weili versus Alexa Grasso, it would be B tier. Um, maybe I'll put it C tier just because it is kind of special that these two women are, are both from China and they're fighting for the belt. That's never been done, never been seen before. But 
it's in Vegas. What, what the fuck is the UFC doing here? Get your shit together. All right. You had a big opportunity. Even if you're not going to go to China, we did a UFC Noche card to showcase the Mexican fighters. So do something similar for China. All right. They've done showcase cards for a, a lot of the Asian fighters and they put them on with the main card starting at 1 a.m. They've done those at the apex. They should have done something better like this. But anyway, let's get on to the next one. Um, Jack the Joker and Joe Pfeiffer. I'm putting this in the S tier, man. I think that this is going to be just a fascinating matchup, man. It's like the changing of the guard. Jack the Joker, I mean, the guy's been snapping, snapping limbs, you know, just breaking necks and, and, and taking checks for the past 10 years. And Joe Pfeiffer broke Francis Ngannou's punching power record, okay? I'm just looking forward to this. Is Jack the Joker going to snap the limb again? Is he going to break Joe Pfeiffer's arm like it's a twig? Or is Joe Pfeiffer going to mitigate the risk from the Joker and stand and bang with him? Will he be able to nullify the rowdiness that Jack Hermanson brings? I'm just joking about this, guys. Uh, I'm going to put this in the C tier. I'm actually hyped for the return of the Joker. That's right. I did bump up Zhang and Yan to the C tier too because... I'll just I'll just pretend that when Zhang and Yan are going down, it's under a better condition where the UFC didn't totally fuck up. If it was such a great matchup, why don't you respect it and put it on its own card, bro? Whatever. Jack Hermanson, this is going to be a fun one, but it's not S tier. I just want to see the return of the Joker, all right? I think he'd give Izzy a tough fight. Um, how's he going to look after a long layoff? And hey, Joe Pfeiffer didn't really make easy work of Abdul Razak Al-Hassan on the feet. And I know Abdul is powerful and you have to be careful, but he's not as skilled as Jack Hermanson on the feet. Uh, but he did submit him. And that's where it gets interesting. Joe Piper's a big guy. Hermanson's been inactive. Both guys are good grapplers. I just can't wait to see this fight. But it's C-tier because it's Hermanson and, and Joe Piper. You know what? For meme reasons, for, for because this is going to be a funny matchup, all right, and I can do my Dan Hardy impressions. I'll put this in the beach here. Fuck it. Next up, Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. Let me be honest about this. Conor's been out for so long. I genuinely, like, I, I don't really care that much if he doesn't fight again. But if he does fight, I recognize that it's just a constant roller coaster of, of fun with McGregor buildups. All right. He's totally unhinged. His fans are delusional, and I have a good time making fun of them, talking about how. You know, they're totally wrong on him not being washed up. But then again, if he proves me wrong, I, I look like an idiot. And then that's just going to make for a funny moment. If I'm right, then I get to tell you guys, oh, I told you the whole time Michael Chandler was better. I'm going to enjoy seeing Conor McGregor get absolutely obliterated because that's what you should expect. I mean, what else do you expect from this guy? He he's not training at a high level. I don't need to rattle out every single reason why he loses. There's just hundreds at this point. I mean, last night is one of them. He was probably at the Black Forge Inn getting shit-faced. He's training with a bunch of yes-men. I can go on all day. It's going to be a great buildup, okay? When I see these guys in the cage, I'm going to be excited. If Michael Chandler knocks out McGregor, people are going to get humbled, the McGregor fans specifically. And it'll just be like another example of, yeah, you kind of have to respect the game and you can't just fuck off for a bunch of years partying and expect to come back and compete at the highest level. But if Connor wins... Then he's going to be, you know, taking a massive boost of confidence from that. And he'll stay active. And it's good to have McGregor in the game. So I'll admit it. It's exciting. I can't wait for McGregor and Chandler. It's going to be a fun buildup. I can't wait to make content on this one too. So I'll put that in the S tier. Uh, next up, Brian Ortega and Yair Rodriguez. Eh. I just don't really need to see it. We've already seen it. Even though it was one round and it ended with like a bit of a fluky injury, why not just make a better matchup? Ortega Aljo, Yair Cater. Listen, it is what it is. It's going to be fun stylistically. Like this will be a banger, but it's just not necessary. And I think Yair is going to beat Ortega's ass. It just seems like it's not that competitive. You know what? I will say. I do believe Ortega still has a decent chance to win if you're just looking at the discrepancy in grappling or the difference in skill there. And I know that Ortega technically got submitted. His shoulder came out of its socket or something like that. Um, 
but it was the way he landed on the ground. It was just a little bit weird. He tried to pull his arm out of a, a submission attempt, and that's not going to happen more than one out of a hundred times. So Ortega could dominate if he takes it to the mat. And his wrestling is a little bit better than people give it credit for. Like he is able to get takedowns. He took Volkanovski down a couple of times, took Max down a couple of times. And Yair, that's the hole in his game. And we know that Ortega's tough as nails. He can endure a beating. Maybe I'll put this in the B tier, man. I just don't need to see it, but I will put it in the B tier, to be honest. Because it will be fun. Next up, let me go to the A tier again. I'm going to put in Jeff Neal versus Ian Machado Gary. Okay, Mr. Machado's back. We're going to have a great buildup to this fight. I think Ian's going to make it to the press conference. If he doesn't show up to the press conference or his media obligations, then my faith in him being a star are completely gone because, you know, he's blocked comments on his Instagram, which already shows me that he's not really cut out for criticism and Listen, if Ian Gary's a star, it's because he's polarizing. If he can't take criticism, if he can't face the music, he's not going to put himself out there. And that's the issue. I hope that he redeems himself on this fight week. The fight itself is fun. You either love him or you hate him. If you hate him, you want to see him get knocked out. And if you want to see him get knocked out, there's a chance. Jeff Neal's the man that could do it. If Ian Gary wins, he gets on the mic. He sets the octagon on fire. He calls out Sean Strickland, right? He makes a big deal out of whoever he's calling out. He becomes a bigger star. We're more excited for his next fight. Uh, you just can't deny that this is going to be one that you're looking forward to. Good striking battle as well. It's going to be a fun buildup. And Jeff Neal really wants to lay him out for flaunting the photo of his mugshot. So I got to put that in the A tier. Can't wait for it. Uh, this is going to be a pretty good fight as well. I'm going to put this in the B tier. And that's also on 298. That is Ikram Aleskarov versus Anthony Hernandez. This is one that you're not going to want to miss, man. Aleskarov's been tearing through his competition in the UFC so far, but this is a big step up in competition. This is no slouch. And Anthony Hernandez has one of the best gas tanks in the UFC. He's got ridiculously good grappling and wrestling. And if Ikram Aleskarov fails to finish Anthony Hernandez in the first round and a half, He's like, man, this guy's going to have to go through hell and back to get the dub by decision because Anthony Hernandez is going to put a disgusting pace on him. All right, watch Hernandez's fights. I've described this style before, and the perfect way for me to describe it, he's like a Colby Covington that's firing on all cylinders. You know how Colby looks when he's just having his way with guys. He's taking them down. He, he's smothering them on the ground. If you pair that with finishing ability and like, Really good, hard ground and pound shots, submissions. He's like a Colby Covington with submissions and ground and pound TKO ability, bro. All right. He's really exciting. There's a good chance that he wins this fight. And a lot of people that haven't watched him fight before are going to be shocked. But then I also think that Ikram Aleskadov, if he gets this dub, then he's just proving that he does actually belong at the top of this division. Because if you finish someone like Anthony Hernandez... At this point, you're pretty special. I know Hernandez has been finished before by someone like Kevin Holland, but that was way back in the day. Hernandez is hitting his stride. Uh, I just can't wait for this matchup. Two high-level grapplers going at it. Hardcore fans treat right there. Uh, next up, I'm going to add Bilal Muhammad and Leon Edwards. I kind of want to put this in the A tier for the buildup. I think that the fight is going to be a little bit slow. I think most of you guys would agree with that just because of both of their styles. But it will be fun, right? Even though Leon Edwards may be boring to watch sometimes, we're still watching a really high-level guy in a title fight. And when it's a title fight, that just makes it more exciting. But Bilal Muhammad's going to be talking a lot of shit. Bilal Muhammad is underrated on the mic. He's super confident going into this matchup. I'm just looking forward to the stare-downs. I'm looking forward to the press conference, man. But I will put this in the B tier because, you know... It's not as good as O'Malley versus Cheeto or Oliveira versus Armand. The hardcore fan in me really wants to put it high up there, but I also kind of recognize it's going to be a bit of a stinky fight. And you know what? I say the hardcore fan in me, am I wrong to prefer these like wars or these, you know, super high action packed fights over a slower one like Leon Edwards brings three kicks around and Bilal Muhammad's three head kicks, a couple of jabs and a takedown around it. I mean, I don't think I'm a casual for saying that. I, I recognize that this is just really high level. These are the two best guys, and I'm excited for this merit-based 
title fight. I'm excited for the buildup. You know, people hate on Bilal. I actually think he's kind of funny. You know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to let the peer pressure get to me. That's A tier, baby. I'm actually excited for that. Even though I don't love it on 300. Man, you know what? Fuck it. I'm putting it A tier. I actually do like Bilal Muhammad and Leon. And I'm happy that Bilal's getting his title fight. Rebellus to Spain and Josh Parisian. I just want to see this guy catch a body. Okay? So I'm going to go with Rebellus to Spain. Knocking out Josh Parisian. This is the debut of the Cuban Olympic Taekwondo athlete who's six foot seven that in his last three fights has finished every single one of those opponents in under 10 seconds versus Josh Parisian. Okay. Like you could not pay me to fight Robellus to Spain. All right. And Josh Parisian showing up for 15 K 20 K. I bet it's more like 25, but still, man, I see people commenting on his Instagram. Hey, if you shoot a takedown, you got this, buddy. No amount of training is going to help Josh Parisian win this fight. So you may be saying, well, you like this one. Why don't you like Cody? I'm sorry, Cody Brundage versus Bo Nickel. Because Bo Nickel's already fought a couple of cans. And I want to see him take a bump up in competition. This is Rebellis' first ever fight in the UFC. It is what it is. I would have rather it have, it have been someone that's a little bit better. I would have rather it have it been someone like Chase Sherman or hell, even uh, what's that guy that just beat Andre Orlovsky? Waldo Cortez Acosta? That would have been better because, I mean, he's probably fucked too. Everyone is screwed fighting this guy unless you're in the top five. All right. So either way, it's just going to be a fun debut. All right, we don't need him to take a bump up in competition because this is the first fight for him in the UFC. So I think this guy is going to be a problem in the heavyweight division, and that's why you should keep your eye on it, and that's why you should watch the debut just to see what this guy's capable of in this division. All right, next up, Marab de Velashvili versus Henry Cejudo. I'm going to put that in the B tier, all right? Actually, you know what? Screw it. I'm putting that in the A tier. Marab de Velashvili may be a little bit boring, but I just can't wait for this fight. I'm looking forward to seeing Henry Cejudo get dominated in the grappling. I'm looking forward to Henry Cejudo and his mastermind game plan falling on its face. Henry Cejudo and his championship mentality falling on its face. Marab de Velashvili is the hungriest man in UFC history. Every single time this guy fights, it's terrifying. And for the reasons that wouldn't necessarily be thought of. It's not like he's going to knock you out. You're not getting hurt. You're not getting injured. But you just know you're not hungrier than him. That's the thing. You just know that you're not willing to dig as deep. That's why it's fun to watch Marab. I love that style where it's just, you know, cardio, cardio first. Uh, and I think that Henry Sudo is going to get fraud checked again. Okay, I say fraud checked. That's not the right word. I already think he's a little bit of a fraud, meaning he's overrated is all I'm saying. Henry Sudo won his gold medal. Where's all of the grappling exchanges where Henry's dominating in? I mean, he's not really able to keep people on the mat. His striking is glorified. He's just a brawler that bites down on the mouthpiece that's good. I mean, he's not like a special, special striker. And I think his genius is exaggerated. So that's why I'm really looking forward to this. Drickus, Duplessis, and Sean Strickland. I'm going to put this in the A tier as well. Perfect matchup. There's some heat on it. They've had some interesting interactions. The fight sells itself. I mean, just stylistically, both of these guys coming off of insanely good wins that have fans super hyped about their careers. Like the hype for Sean Strickland's career right now compared to the hype this time last year is just off the charts. The same thing with Drickus Duplessis from before the Robert Whitaker fight. To now, we've gone from thinking he's a bum who's just a wild man that gets by just by being a Chad to someone that's elite. Uh, and now I just can't wait to see it. So it's going to be a fun scrap. I'm going to put that in the A tier. Carlos Olberg and Dominic Reyes, no interest. I don't want to see Dominic Reyes get knocked out again. And that's what's going to happen. I don't want to see Reyes get done like that. Next up, O'Malley versus Sanhagen. I love this. You know what? S tier. This is kind of similar to the Cheeto Vera rematch, except the beef is a little bit more subtle. I think they have a lot of respect for each other, but they are also having a battle of the egos, right? Sanhagen has been saying that O'Malley is kind of bitch made. 
He's trying to get the easiest matchups for the most money. He's obsessed with fame and clout. And that at the end of the day, if that's where your mind is at, you're going to get destroyed by someone like me. This is Corey Sanhagen's thought process because I'm just focused on being the best in the world. All I care about is being the baddest guy in this division. I don't care if I have to fight a hundred times before I get the belt. If I lose to one of these contenders, I don't deserve to be the champion. Whereas O'Malley has said that Corey Sandhagen's just a, a bit of an idiot with the way that he manages his career. He doesn't make great decisions and should maybe worry a little bit more about setting himself up for life. So I love that, okay? Because these guys, they're polar opposites and the matchup itself is just gold. First of all, we have O'Malley finally getting a taste of his own medicine, fighting someone that is his actual stature, his height. And that's always good to see, just like Volkanovsky fighting someone like Deporia. It's like, thank God, we finally get to see these guys take on someone that's going to make it tough for them because they don't have that same size advantage. Look at when Adesanya fought Alex Pereira after like five years of fighting these dudes that were like 5'11 and six foot. It was a breath of fresh air. But on top of that, we know that this is going to be an amazing striking battle. Corey Sandhagen is more well-rounded. He can mix in the takedowns. He can utilize the clinch. He has a really high fight IQ. He's got a granite chin. Super high level striker on the feet. O'Malley, of course, is going to be getting better as he continues to win. So this is one of the best matchups you could possibly make. This is like a once in a decade type of matchup. Even though Sandhagen has been beaten before, it feels like he really may still be the best fighter in that division. All right. So I really want to see this one. Piotr Yang and Song Yudong. I'm going to put this in the A tier. If this was Piotr Jan coming in this fight with a lot of momentum and we could kind of trust in his ability to give his best performance, I would put it at the S tier just for how great these striking exchanges are going to be. But the reason it's just in the A tier, even though I love this matchup, is because I'm not confident that Jan is at his best. He's lost three fights in a row. He got dominated by Marab. Still had good takedown defense. I mean, it's not like Marab really beat him up, but he broke Jan mentally. And if you're breaking on mentally, that could definitely change him a little bit. That can get in the way of his motivation. Um, but he's still good. I recognize how good Jan is. And this is a striking battle for the most part. And it's not a striking battle against a guy like O'Malley that has a massive reach advantage and that's just got better footwork. This is Song Yudong. He's a little bit more simple. He doesn't throw a lot of jabs. and He doesn't throw long rangey kicks at range. But... Yadong is a tough stylistic matchup because he can mix it up. He can grapple. He can kick the legs of Jan, which was an issue in the Marab fight. So it's a competitive matchup. I don't know who's going to win. I'm pulling for Jan. I'm kind of dreading it in a way because I have a feeling he may lose. But I'm just looking forward to the boxing exchanges on the feet. And I really want Jan to get the job done. And if he wins, that's going to be one of the best moments of the entire year. Uh, so... Yeah, there's that. I think he is definitely a better striker. I, I just think the blueprint to beat Jan is out there. Will he be able to fix the holes in his game, which would be having lower output, not having that sense of urgency, being a little bit too defensive at times? Okay, let's see if he can come back with a different approach. Next up, I'm going to put Costa and Whitaker in the C tier. The reason I'm saying C tier, even though I love this stylistically, any Paulo Costa fight buildup is fun when he's actually at the press conference and his fights are fun. Whitaker's fights are fun. I could talk about how great this fight is stylistically all day, but the reason it's C tier is because I don't think it'll happen and I don't want to get my hopes up. So naturally, I'm just not excited for it because I don't think it's likely that we see it. I think Costa pulls out his usual antics. Next up, Adesanya's return. We're going to throw him in the A tier. All right, you can hate on him all you want. You can't deny you look forward to his fights. You're tuning into the press conferences. You're tuning into his cringy media days. And I am too, which is why I want to see him come back. If it's Hamza Chemaev, I love it. If it's Drikas Duplessis, that's S tier right there. You know what? Fuck it. S tier. It could be S tier. You know what? S tier. He's got the Ian Gary effect. A little bit boring, but. I love Adesanya buildups. It's entertainment, man. At least he tries. And when these longtime champions go away from the sport for a little bit, 
fans tend to want them back. You know, we, we look at the past with rose tinted glasses sometimes, and that's kind of how it is for everyone in the Usman reign. We look at his title reign and we think, man, Usman was such an active champion. He was dominant. He was actually having fun fights. For Izzy, it's the buildups, like the, the buildups to these fights were great. And also, if he disappoints with a boring performance, we get to talk about it and clown the Izzy fans, okay? Or at least me as a content creator, I, I love rubbing it in to the Izzy fans because I, I've been saying he's overrated and it's a constant battle between me and them. If he proves me wrong, then they get to do that to me, all right? And I'm on the receiving end of it. And then I look like the idiot and we get to go back and forth again. And, it, you know, we're, we're emotionally invested in Izzy's fight. So I got to put him in the S tier, man. I'm going to be honest about it. So let's move on to the next one. I'm going to put this fight in the B tier too. Curtis Blades and Jilton Almeida. I love it. I want to see if Curtis Blades can stuff the takedowns. If he can, I think he knocks Jilton Almeida out. If Jilton Almeida can't get the takedown, he's forced to stand with Blades. He's forced to endure him. Similar to O'Malley, he just has to stand with Cheeto for like five rounds pretty much. That's like a punishment for O'Malley in a way. So this is like, you know, Almeida's punishment for stinking it up so much in his last fight in Brazil. But if Almeida is the guy to impose his will, he takes down Curtis Blades, that would be a spectacle. If he submits Curtis Blades, that's a spectacle too. It's just a really good stylistic matchup and I'm looking forward to it. Um, on to the next one. Dustin Poirier, Benoit St. Denis, A tier. I think he's going to destroy Dustin Poirier, but I'm still kind of worried because I do admit that Dustin Poirier has the striking advantage. He has the speed advantage. And Benoit is still a little bit open on the feet, but it's going to be fun to see him prove the doubters wrong, thinking that he will not beat Poirier, where I believe he will. Okay, and I want him to prove that he's not just, oh, he's just beating, he's just beating cans or... He's beating low-level guys. He doesn't just beat Poirier. Like, you're about to find out. People can take a big step up in competition and win. So I look forward to it. It's going to be a war. It's going to be a scrap. Um, I don't think St. Denise is just going to knock him out in the first round. But ultimately, he's going to, like, drown Dustin Poirier. Take him down. Submit him. Maybe head kick him when Poirier is tired. Or maybe Poirier beats the shit out of him, man. It's a five-rounder. So we could see that, too. But I just can't wait to be right about this one, most of all. And I, I want to see him win. I want to see one of the most entertaining fighters on the come up, get another dub, prove people wrong. So I'm looking forward to it. Let's get the next one on here. This fight hasn't been made official, but I'm going to put it in the A tier. And that's Surreal Gone versus Sergey Pavlovich. I love this fight. The perfect fight to make. Aspinall, he doesn't want to give Cyril Gone that chance right away because Gone has ducked him. So in the meantime... Let's do both of these guys in a number one contenders fight. Maybe not number one contenders fight if it's Sergey. I feel like Sergey may need a couple more. But if Gon beats Pavlovich, then you can say, all right, well, both him and Aspinall beat Pavlovich. He's done some extra work. Now he's maybe earned another shot because there's not a lot of, you know, other guys that we would really want to see fight Aspinall right now in the heavyweight division. We know Jones isn't going to happen. And this fight stylistically is just a, a dream matchup too. We know that Sergey Pavlovich has a really long reach. He can touch Cyril Gaon. He can knock him out. And Gaon doesn't have a ton of power. So it's like, can Gaon mitigate the risk for that long? Is he going to be able to dance around Sergey and just beat the shit out of him and make him look plotty? I want to see what happens here. So on to the next one. No interest here, Bo Nickel and Cody Brundage. I think that Cody Brundage should just go out there and maybe fight a bear. Fight a, fight a lion, a tiger in their prime. You're going to have a better fight on your hands. Bo Nickel is going to knock him out in the first five seconds. I just don't need to see this because it's not Bo's debut. All right? We, we don't need to coddle him this much. Give him a slight bump up. Even if it's a guy that he can beat, just a slight bump up at competition, please. Can we do that? Because read the room, UFC, please. Uh, understand that the fans don't really want Bo Nickel to continue to get free win after free win after free win. Just give us the idea that it's a step up, even if it really isn't. Like, I think Bo Nickel probably finishes Gerald Mearshart in the first round, but at least it's somebody. Okay, on to the next one. Jim Miller, Bobby Green. I have a feeling Jim Miller's going to knock Green out, but Green could go out there and style on him too. He's a whole lot faster than the last few guys Jim Miller has fought. Either way, it's just the right matchup to make. 
it's a feel-good moment for both guys. It's like repaying Jim Miller and Bobby Green for giving us all of these great fights. They deserve this opportunity. So it's a wholesome moment for both guys. I like it. Uh, Yoel Romero versus Tiago Santos, C tier. As much as I love Yoel, he's one of my favorite fighters ever. Okay? When he was in the UFC, he was my favorite fighter. But the Yoel Romero of today is just a different guy. He's probably just doing a couple of sets of bench press in his training camp these days. I doubt he's really training hard. Once you go to Bellator and you're a, a, a old, washed-up UFC fighter that has a name, you no longer really care about getting that belt. Your hunger kind of dies with your UFC career. And you're just showing up for paychecks. That's basically how Yoel Romero fights. In the UFC, he could be a slow fighter sometimes. And in the PFL, it's just, or Bellator, it just turned up a notch, right? It's the frozen one versus the frozen one. Tiago Santos has had a bunch of boring fights exiting the UFC. And Yoel Romero is going to be throwing like one punch per round, not actually going for it. So I think it's going to be a boring matchup, but I'm still going to watch it. All right. It's, you know, I may as well tune in. Next one. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Mavzar Evluev and Arnold Allen, A tier. That's this weekend. Cannot wait. I cannot wait for this matchup because we're really about to find out who's like the solidified fourth best guy in this division. And I think that Arnold Allen is going to beat Mavzar Evluev, who's undefeated and has a ton of hype. But hey, Allen was undefeated before his last fight, wasn't he? So, I mean, both of these guys are elite. Mavzar Evluev is in for a rude awakening on the feet, and Arnold Allen may just get grapple fucked in this one. So it's competitive. We don't know what's going to happen. These guys are elite. Hardcore fans, dream matchup. I can't wait. Next up, we have, we only have a couple more. Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill, S tier. Salty man Jamal Hill. Chip on his shoulder. Angry at the fans. Fans are going to be giving this guy a hard time in the build-up to the fight. It's going to be annoying because the casuals are going to be saying, you shouldn't even fight this man. Don't even look at his direction, Jamal. You don't even deserve to be in the same room with him, even though it's just a fight and he's confident in his ability to win, right? But I just want to see this because I think it's going to be stylistically fantastic. Pereira, Jamal Hill, it's going to be fireworks every time. Who doesn't like watching Pereira fight? But also, Jamal Hill's just going to have that like intensity and anger in the build-up to this. And I think it's going to make for really fun moments on the mic. Interviews, okay? Fan interactions. We're going to see Jamal Hill and his Twitter rants against every little post that's critiquing him. So I'm looking forward to it. Really big fan of Jamal Hill and Alex Pereira. That's S tier. Islam Makashev. I'll put him in the A tier, Okay. I can't wait to see Islam Makhachev make his return, no matter who it's against. If it's, if it's against Leon, if it's against Oliveira again, even though right now it's easy to say that we're not going to be that hyped for an Oliveira rematch, if Oliveira gets a knockout over Armand or submits him, he's going to look like he's back on top two. And when these guys are facing off, they have a, a super competitive rivalry. There's going to be a lot of drama in the buildup to that fight too. We know Islam Makhachev brings the mind games. That's going to be fun. Justin Gagey versus Makachev is the only one that I'm not dying to see. But still, it'll be a fun matchup. He's the best fighter on earth right now. So I got to put him in the A tier. Um, let's see. Who else do we have? Alex Pereira versus Magomed Ankalaev. Eh, I'll put that in the A tier. A little bit lower. Okay. Than the Alex Pereira and Jamal Hill fight. But you know what? Maybe in the B tier, to be honest. Because I think it's a tough matchup for Pereira. It is a fun fight. Magomed will stand with him a bit. I want to see if Pereira can actually like beat one of these guys that isn't like an Oliveira type of grappler. He's not just going to take you down and finish you like that. He's a, He's got good grappling, but he's not a top 10 grappler in the UFC. I mean, Magomed, for the most part, is a good striker with grappling in his back pocket. He's super well-rounded. He's smart. He's technical. He's patient. High fight IQ. It's a great matchup. It's like Leon and Bilal kind of. It's just Leon and Bilal is going to have some heat on it. You know what I mean? This one is like super merit-based. Magomed deserves it. It's what should happen. It's technical, but it's just missing something. And that's just, I guess, stylistically. And we're used to seeing Pereira versus Izzy. It's like there's this great storyline or Pereira versus Jamal Hill. There's a little bit of a beef there. Not really. 
Pereira versus Anthony Smith would have a bit of a beef. It just, it's missing a little bit of that extra spice, okay? Let's get on to the next one. Jack Della Maddalena versus Gilbert Burns. I'm putting that in the B tier as well. It'll be a fun fight. Both guys are dogs. Is Jack Della Maddalena going to work on his takedown defense and fight IQ and not pull 100 guillotines? Is Gilbert Burns going to be able to expose him? Is Gilbert Burns going to be able to stand with Jack Della Maddalena? Either way, it'll be a fun fight. I'm looking forward to that. Let's get on to the next one. What else do we have? Holland and MVP. It's going to be all right. You know what? I'll put this in the B tier. I just think it's going to be a little bit of a stinky fight. I think it's going to be boring. Both guys are going to be overly concerned with not getting hit, not looking bad, not getting knocked out, that they're going to forget about actually winning the fight or putting on a show. But I hope that Kevin Holland goes out there and makes this a dogfight. It's hard to do that against Michael Venom Page because he's so elusive and hard to hit. Doesn't engage all that often. But Holland's younger. He's been more active. He's been fighting at a higher level recently. He's got a great chin. I think he can do that. And Holland talks about not caring about the belt. I mean, he even snaps at reporters that ask him about fighting for the belt. He gets mad at it. So if you're not fighting for the belt, why don't you just have a really fun fight? It would boost your stock. Even if you lose, man. I want to see this. I'll say it's B tier. But I just have a feeling that it's not going to be as good as we or a lot of other people expect. Yuri Braska, Alexander Rakic. I'll put it B tier. I mean, listen, I understand that Yuri is super entertaining. I just can't get that hype for a Rakic fight. I can't. And I have a feeling Rakic is going to lay on him. Because even though Yuri is a guy where it's just impossible to have a boring fight with him, if there's anyone that can, it's Rakic. Okay? He's just super big for the weight class. And he could just camp in half guard. And I just don't want to see that shit, man. So that's my fear. This is the... I mean, listen. If the worst... Or if the least amount of hype I can have for a Yuri Praska fight is a B tier, then that's pretty good, right? Still... It's all right, but it's just not as good as it could have been. Uh, last but not least, Calvin Cater and Aljamain Sterling. I mean, I'm not I'm not that hyped for it. I'm being honest. I feel like this is a bit of a C-tier matchup. I'm not that hyped. And that's it. That is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making this. I actually love these types of videos. So thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time.